Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today is the Retro Crochet Ornament Throw. Today, I'm going to be focusing on just the motif. And here is the breakdown of all the colors, all the way from A to I. Here are the colors, the Red Heart Super Saver. And you'll need two balls of each one of these colors in order to play with this uh, particular example. This blanket is 45 inches by 55 inches long. And you're going to be using a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook today. The colors are really subjective to what you prefer, but consistency I think is key when it comes to this. And when you're looking at the blanket as a whole, you can see that the white here is the consistent things that join and the rest of it can be really fun color play. All the color breakdown is available to you. So you can see here is that you can make the ornament number one using color B, E, and D, ornament two, C, B, and E, and etc. And you can make the whole list or you can go it on your own and do it any way that you want to. So today I'm going to show you how to make this. Now, when you join yarn, you end up with a little lumpy thing right here. I'm going to show you how to avoid that in today's tutorial. There's only a total of five rows. But if I was to do this and you weren't watching me, which I did do, is that I would do all the first color first, put it aside, and then come back and do all the whites then, or whatever this section is going to be if you're going to change it out to different colors, and then come back and do the final two rows or two rounds. And therefore, it's easier to remember. I also have a crochet diagram available for you to be able to follow this along in order to go your way all the way around. Once I did a few of these though, I was able to put it into my head so that it was a lot easier to do. And I was able to make notes for myself to make it easier for me to follow, which I will demonstrate today. The video chapters that is in the video description, you're going to notice will have time markers for rounds number one, two, three, four, and five. And so you'll be able to use those time markers to come back and just to replay right from the very beginning of those particular rounds so that you can understand it even more and quickly go through the videos. Without further ado, let's begin round number one with whatever color you decided to go with today. As we begin today, I'm going to be demonstrating some techniques that may not be written on the pattern. So it's just my experience showing. So we're going to start with a slip knot to begin. Don't waste a lot of yarn, so don't make the yarn really long for a tail here. And you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And slip stitch to the beginning chain, going in and through and just pull. Now this tail end, I want you to wrap it around the ring when you're ready for round number one and get that stuck up underneath the ring. Therefore, you won't have to use a tapestry needle to sew it into position. Let's begin round number one. In round number one, we are going to chain three and then do 11 double crochets around. So the chain three counts as a double crochet, but I'm gonna show you a cheating technique through experience. If you chain just one, and then just open up the ring that you have and place in 11 double crochets. The chain one helps you to build it up and therefore you'll have a very consistent looking center versus having one double crochet that is actually represented by a chain three. So this is two double crochet and three and wrap that tail so that it gets stuck around the ring. So I have three, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And before you fasten to the, or to slip stitch to the first one, make sure that you can count twelve. So one, two, so you can count the tops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Slip stitch then to the top of the first double crochet or the chain three, depending on how you did it, and that's be good. If you went over top of the ring, you can just use your scissors, get it out, and cut it right now so that you don't have to worry about it later, and move on to round number two using the same color, or you can switch off your colors. You decide what works for you color-wise. Round number two, you are going to chain three. So this will count as one half double crochet and a chain one space. So one, 
two, three. Come to this one right here. Do you see that? And that's gonna be a half double crochet. And it helps if you actually crochet the damn thing. <laughs> so a half double crochet and then chain one and then come into your next one, half double crochet, chain one, come to your next one and do this all the way around. And so you'll end up with 12 half double crochets and 12 chain one spaces. I'll see you at the end of the round. So put me on pause and do this and I'll be right back. When you come all the way around, make sure you chain one after the final half double crochet. And before you attach it here, make sure that you can count 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You can then slip stitch to the second chain. Remember how we chain three? Do it just to the second and slip stitch. Now I'm going to get rid of this color. And so if you want to keep the colors, you can. But I would recommend that you do... Um, um, make sure you take a, care of any loose satins. So just turn it around to the back of this. Take the few moments it needs just to weave in your tails because if you don't, things will fall out. Okay, so just coming back, just go in behind. And when you pull the first time, don't change the shape of your circle. And it's better if you can not just go between the strands but actually split the plies and it gets it really stuck into position. And don't let that needle be visible on the other side, which is the good side. Okay, once you have that done, you can safely trim that yarn, and we're gonna get ready for round number three. And let's begin. Now round number three is gonna have an overlay that goes in front of this, so you may not want it to be the same color, that's why I wanted to change my color out. So if I was to do 84 of these, I would, and I wanted the first two rows to be the same color, I would do 84 of rounds one and two, and just do any colors that I want to, but make sure I have 84 of these before moving on. But that's your call on what you would like to do. Let's begin by starting with a slip knot and start round number three. Round number three, we have to start in any of the half double crochets. So when you look at the stitch, it's right here. Do you see that? So just going on in, the first one's always kind of a pain. So if you're struggling a bit on the first one, it's, it's not you. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna just pull it through to join it and then chain three, and that's your first double crochet. And in the same stitch where you did the join, you're going to double crochet again. Go right up over top of the straggler. You will use a tapestry needle to hide that in later. So the top of this half double crochet has two double crochets. So the chain three equals a double crochet plus then the double crochet. So you got two. The next stitch is down here. So follow it straight on down and you are going to just leave this chain one space in behind and just pick off the same stitch where this is going into, and you were going to double crochet. So you're gonna just go through, give it a bit of slack, and pull through two and two, and make sure it's the same height as the other two. So here's the repeat going all the way around. Here's your next half double crochet, it's right here. So you'll put in two double crochet. So one and two. And the next one, follow it straight on down and it's the same one right here, just follow it. And you're gonna just pick it off in the background, pull through, give it a bit of slack and pull up and make sure it's the same height. So these ones here will look like they're coming in, just like you see here. Okay, so the next half double crochet is gonna have two. Any dog hair you see in today's video is free. <laughs> um, we have two great Pyrenees dogs here and their hair is unbelievable. Okay, so we got two double crochet and then the third one comes down, just follow it straight on down and pick it out of the background and do that. Please do this all the way around for round number three. I'll be right back in a moment. Okay, so I'm coming into the last one. So the last stitch will be here. And if you look at it, you can see that it's missing. So you have to do the last stitch coming down 
Now, what I want to show you here is my little technique of being able to get rid of that little lumpy thing. So when you join, you always end up with this really imperfection and I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that. But if you wanna slip stitch and join and you're okay with that, then be my guest. <laughs> so you notice that I never joined it to the first. So I'm going to pull this out and I'm gonna throw it through a tapestry needle. But wait, there's more. <laughs> what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take where this is popping out of this hole and I'm going to take it to the first one. It's the top of the chain three and I'm going to go through where I would normally would have slip stitched right here. And I'm just going to bring it around here. And do you see where this is coming out of? I want to go down through the hole where that's coming out of and go towards the back of the project. And what you're doing is you're emulating, oh my God, big word today. You're emulating what a stitch looks like and you're gonna pull it tight. Look at that, no more lumpy thing. So then you're gonna turn it around and then on the back side, you are just gonna weave in your ends going back and forth, what, how many times? Yeah, three times. You get yourself a cookie today and make sure that you break apart your plies. You're also going to want to weave in the very first one that you did as well. There's not enough there going over top of that stitch in order for you to be able to hide that in accurately. Oh my God, now I've got cat hair. Ah, don't bet have pets, I tell you. <laughs> so let's get rid of that one too. And just take the few moments it needs to do this. Because if you have to do 84 motifs at the end and you're gonna weave in your ends, chances are you will quit. And you'll go on social media and bang it in and everybody's gonna give you thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Not me though, I'm not that way. So let's uh, continue weaving in your ends and we're gonna move on to round number four next. And we just have two more rounds left. Look at that, perfect. Round number four, here we go. I'm going to create a slip knot and we need to do a standing back post um, half double crochet. <laughs> let's begin. And that's why in the, in the diagram you don't see any chaining. So what I want you to do is that I want you to put this on and I want you just to hold this, it prevents it from spinning around and going out of control. You know, it's kind of like my personality, out of control. And I want to put the yarn into my hands like I normally would be crocheting. And I'm going to start with the one that goes down because it's my lucky day. So I'm going to wrap the hook and by holding this one right here with this finger, it prevents it from unspinning. And I want to stick it from behind and around that post that is the double crochet that is going in and we're doing as a back post pull through kind of push it down with it and then pull through all three we're going to have to weave in this tail later so you've just done now a back post half double crochet but it's a standing one because there was nothing to start with so now the rest of these all the way around are going to be a back post half double crochet so wrap the hook come around the next post from behind pop that post back to the back, pull through, and pull through all three. Okay, so wrap, next post. And I would turn it all around once in a while so that you are not going to accidentally skip any of the posts. It's very easy, sometimes I'm gonna do it intentionally, but it's easy just to not pay attention and then you think you have it and then you look and it's missing or it's a partial. So let me show you what that would look like. And it really would drive you nuts. So let's just say I wasn't paying attention and I got a partial. And so when you turn it around, you can see that you got a piece of it, but you never got all of the post. That may drive you nuts. So just keep an eye on that and just maybe exaggerate your hook coming from the back. Take it back to the back and just quickly check it when you're looking. So half double crochet in the back post all the way around. This is round number four, and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming to my very last one, and I am just going to slip stitch to the top of the first standing half double crochet. We'll weave in the ends later. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the color going for one more time, and I'm gonna show you the fifth and final round now. I'm gonna take it back to the diagram to give you an illustration on how I'm gonna attack this thing. So here in the diagram, we're right here. 
So when we go to start, we're going to chain two and we're gonna half double crochet here. And this guy here and this guy are gonna stand by themselves. So there's two into the same and then two by themselves. You can tell I had a note take. So this was considered number one. The next one here is that there's gonna be two into the next and then these two are by themselves. And so this group here will be number two. Then there's gonna be two into this one and then two by themselves. This is group number three. Okay. Then we have the final one right here is that there's two into this one and then two by themselves. So this is number four. So it says to repeat a certain amount of instruction. So this is one, two, three, and four. Then we're going to put two into the same stitch. One is a half and one is a double. The next one is one double, and this is the very edge tips. So there's gonna be two trebles into each of those. This here, from this section right over to this section is the same as starting here and coming around. Okay, so it's the same instruction. So if you can remember it on one side, you can remember it the other. The problem is, is that where we're starting here is not technically at this part. So we gotta make sure that we put in our two double crochets to start one in each, and then this picks up like you would have started over here. And I'll try to explain it as I go. So how I'm gonna say this to you is that I'm gonna say chain two, one half double crochet, and I say this is one, and then the next two are by themselves, and I say one and one. And I'm trying to do that for myself so that I remember that this is one repeat. Then I will put two into the next, and I say this is number two, and then I put two and two, so one and two each of the next two, and then Two into the next, this is three, and then put three and three. Do you see how I'm saying that? So that's how I say it in my head. Hopefully that makes sense. You can always use my diagram or make up your own rules. <laughs> Let's begin the fifth and final round. Okay, this is where I get to confuse you. So we're going to chain two. That will count as your first half double crochet, and you're gonna half double crochet into the same one as the slip stitch. So this would be considered one. So this is the first group of four. So the next two are by themselves, and I just say one and one. So this is group one. The next one is gonna be two into the same one. So I say to myself, this is group two, so this is two and two into the same. And then the next two are by themselves, so I say two and two, and so this is group two. The next one is group three, so I say this is group three, and there's two into the same. And then the next two are three and three. And then finally, the fourth one, there's two into the first one. So I say this is four and four. And the next two are part of the four. So four and four. So I, the way that I say it to myself is that it's easier for me to say that and to keep the count than it is to try to guess. And if you're ever confused, if you ever look at the two double crochets that are two half double crochets that share, it's easy to tell which ones are which, okay? So now we're gonna, the next one is gonna have two stitches into the same. So it'll be a half double crochet and then a double crochet into the same stitch. The next one is one double crochet by itself. And the next two stitches are going to be the, the tip. Okay, it's gonna be the, the tip of the ornament. So there's gonna be two trebles in each of the next two stitches. So there's two into this one. And the next one, there's two into the next. So then we start a fresh side completely. So the next two are going to be one double crochet each. And then we start those group, groups again. So we start our first group and it's going to be two half double crochets into the same one. So I say one and one as they share the same one. The next two are by themselves. So I say one and one. Okay, the next one is group number two. So it's gonna share the same one. So two into the first, so this is two and two. And then the next two are by themselves. So I say this is two and two. So group two is done. The next one is group three, two into the first one. So three and three. And the next two are by themselves. So this is three and three. 
And then group number four is next. So two into the first one. And then the next two are by themselves. So this is four and four. The next one is gonna be share, uh, two into, into the same stitch. The first one is a half double crochet. And the next one that's in the same stitch is a double crochet. So are you seeing consistency with the other side? You should be. So then the next one is one double crochet by itself. And then the next two are each two trebles. So this is the very tip of the ornament. So one of the misconceptions that I did when I started this is that I assumed that we were starting on the tip of an ornament, never partially down the side. It actually makes sense. It makes the tips look a little more uh, professionally done. So you should be left with two stitches after that's done, which I am. So one and two, that is part of the first one. So one and two, and they're each a double crochet. And then you're going to slip stitch. So if you want a nice perfect join, you can do it like I showed you, just trim your yarn, don't join it yet. And you know, this afghan has the potential to be able to win ribbons. So if you take your time with the finishing touches, you may actually get first prize. So I'm going to take this yarn and I'm gonna drag it through the first chain two, coming through, and go down the hole where this is coming out of and favor the back side. So just go towards the other side and you're just gonna pull this shut. Just be careful that when you start and you use this as we do the strips, that you don't accidentally pull it so tight that it looks like it's uh, one stitch instead of two. So just make it look consistent, turn it around, and you're just going to weave in the ends how many times? Yeah, it's three times. So if you change colors, make sure you're only weaving the colors into the actual color itself. So don't uh, bleed it over to a different color. Just stay with what you're working with and more. You're also going to want to fasten in this other starting yarn as you go. Because if you don't fasten things on, you can end up with 84 of these to be able to fix, but if you fasten it as you go, you're good to go. So you have 84 of these motifs to be able to make, and the next video that you'll see me on is that we're going to start making the strips, and so you need to get several of these done before you can even think about that, and all of these motifs are the same other than just colors. If you want to change it as much as you want or keep it consistent, you decide on what's going to work for you because you are the artist at the end of the day. Once everything is woven in, turn it around and you have a nice motif like this. And so when they puzzle together, they'll be puzzling like this. And do you see the, this little lumpy thing? Because I fastened it off nicer this time, you don't see it on this one. So you have to decide if that's important for you or not. That's it for now, and we hope you have a good one, and we'll see you on the next video.